All right, guys, I'm going to get started with what I wanted to talk about. My name is Steve Karstensen, and I, I, I treat sleep apnea in Bellevue, Washington. I'm a happy leader of the airway and sleep course at the Panky Institute for several years, and I have been a restorative dentist now also for, oh, well, I was for 32 years and a dentist for now 39 years. So been around for a while, and I've been studying with uh, some of the best folks in sleep medicine and sleep dentistry for a long time. And so I, I love telling you guys some things that you can do to help your patients right away. So I, it's always good to hear the disclosures of a speaker. I have nothing to sell you except if you want to buy the clinician's handbook for dental sleep medicine from the Panky Bookstore or the ADA, then I do make a little bit of money for those sales. And so, uh, so that's it. I am chief dental editor of Dental Sleep Practice Magazine, but you're not going to hear about any of those things uh, in tonight's talk either. I do direct clinical education at Airway Technologies, and some of the, in fact, the materials I'm going to talk about do come from Airway Technologies, but I have nothing to do with sales over there. I just talk about how to help you guys do a better job of making sure your patient's airways are open every night. So our three topics tonight are gonna be how to open the airway tonight using a MyTap professional intramandibular advancement device. I'm gonna tell you something that you might be able to use in your restorative practice, actually two somethings, to protect your patient's teeth right away and also to make sure you're getting the right bite for indirect restorations. Maybe you haven't thought of doing it this way using these tools and so maybe uh, this will be a good idea for you or you guys, actually might come up with something interesting to use, uh, some interesting way to use these materials in, in things that I haven't thought of. That's, that would be fantastic if that happened. So the, why are we always talking about sleep? Every me meeting you go to, the people that hire me, the people that, uh, that so talk about other things, other good teachers, a whole magazine for this, books are written, all these things, why are we dealing with all of this? We're dealing with it because millions and millions of our, of our people in our communities have a breathing problem. A couple of years ago now, they came up with this statistic. The World Health Organization estimated that a billion people worldwide have a sleep-related breathing problem, and you know, millions and millions of Americans have this. They don't really even know these numbers because uh, that we have to test more people to find out about this. And, 25 years ago, when I started learning about sleep medicine problems, they told me that maybe 15% of the people have been actually diagnosed with sleep apnea that needed to be diagnosed, that were at risk. Today's numbers, they tell us that only about that 85% of people that have sleep apnea have been undiagnosed. So they haven't moved the needle in all these years that I've been involved, and they actually haven't moved the needle in the whole time of the definition of sleep apnea. So we have this big problem going on. And the American Academy of Sleep Medicine estimated that there's uh, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars being spent to deal with the ravages of poor breathing while people sleep and low oxygen levels and troubles like that uh, going on through the whole workforce, through the quality of life issues, through the extra expenses related to health problems related to sleep apnea. All this is going on while we're seeing our patients every day in our clinics. And the reason why we can help with this is because there are so many of us. There's only about 7,000 uh, sleep physicians that are board certified in the United States right now. And to, heat, to treat you know, 29 million, it says, uh, patients that uh, need to be some kind of evaluated. So if there's 7,000 sleep physicians, not even all of them practice, and some of them are, have highly specialized practice, there's a 190,000 dentists out there, 160,000 members of the American Dental Association. There's all these people that can do something to help out. And there are steps being made by your American Dental Association, by the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine and others to try and help make sure that dentists have a chance to contribute in great ways to helping people breathe better at nighttime, feel better in the daytime, improve their health and actually be less of a risk to the population. So that's really, really important work that we can do as dentists that help our patients feel better and affect their physiology at levels that are much deeper than what we are, than our first level of expertise. 
because obviously we're the part of medicine that takes care of the oral cavity. You know, nobody else does. We take care of the teeth and the gums and the bites and the TM joints and the muscles that, and the pains that happen around those areas. But because we're intimately involved with that, um, with the first part of the respiratory tract, there's nothing that keeps us from being an, uh, a good therapist, a good doctor for the upper respiratory area, for the upper airway, for the problems that can happen with a closure of the upper airway of not of poor nasal breathing. So let's let's embrace that. Let's do stuff we can help. But with all those people out there with poor breathing, this year it got worse as if it could get worse, right? Well, of all the folks that have actually been diagnosed, of, of the tens of millions that are actually diagnosed, they're given 95% in the United States are given CPAP machines. Well, in June, June 17th this year, one of the two biggest CPAP companies, Philips, the other one's ResMed, on June 17th, they announced, oh, by the way, our machines have problems. We have a breakdown of uh, parts of the airflow area. It's a seal that happens. And what goes on is particulate matter is coming out in the airflow. And certain chemicals are being released. They didn't actually say which chemicals at first. Certain chemicals are being released. And some of those chemicals are known ca cancer causing agents. So on June 17th, they recommended that patients using these devices made by Philips to discontinue use of your device and call your physician or your durable medical equipment company and get something else. They just drop that on the world. Okay, ResMed, the other big company said, wait a minute, we don't have enough machines or capacity to make up for all of these uh, devices being recalled. Philips doesn't have any fix for this. The first fix they came up with, as a matter of fact, was some silicone seals and they just got the FDA to look at those. And the FDA said, wait a minute, you, those aren't safe enough yet either. So currently, as we speak, as I speak, as, as this talk is going on, there is no fix for the Philips devices. They have, they're working on it, they say. They think they'll get the pipeline under control by the middle of next year, maybe. But all those folks are being with, uh, withheld important um, treatment for their disease discontinue use. You should just call your sleep doctor for an appointment to get something done. How many sleep doctors are there? 7,000. How many of those are practicing? A few, uh, several thousand of those, four or 5,000 of those are available to see patients. There are tens of millions of CPAPs out there that are, haven't been being used because they're sold at three or four million per month. At least they were. So we have a big problem here. So what can we do in our practices? Because all those giant numbers don't really mean anything to our individual practice, do they? I mean, we're not gonna affect 29 million patients. None of us have the capacity to deal with tens of thousands of, pa of patients who call us up and say, by the way, I can't use my CPAP. So what do you do when they realize that you're an airway oriented kind of dentist? You have the posters on the wall. You've sent out a message with, uh, communications from your office. You've posted on social media. You've created a part of your website that says, I'll, I'll help you with your sleep apnea problems. You know about people like me in your community that, uh, that deal with this all the time. And so they call you and they say, dentist, what am I going to do about this? My doctor, my, my uh, CPAP machine company says I was supposed to call my physician. I called them and I can't even get through on the phone. And when I do get through on the phone, they don't have any answers for me. So what, do you, what can we do? Well, there is a something we can do. Your team can actually help by communicating with your patients. They can get on social media. They can send out whatever messages that come out of your office and say, we can help. We've got something to help you tonight. And the message that you can send is, we're not gonna tell you to go away. We're not gonna tell you to go to someplace else. We're gonna tell you to come on in and we've got something to help you. We can help you with a professional level interim device. Now, there are a number of these devices. I'm gonna talk about one of them tonight because it, it's just a favorite of mine, but, uh, but there are a number of these different devices that you can use and some of them are very good. 
This one I think has some big advantages. That's why I'm going to tell you about this one, but there are others out there. So don't shy away from using one of the devices if you're comfortable with it. But tonight we're going to hear about the MyTap Professional Interim Device. It's a, it is a mandibular advancement device. It holds the lower jaw forward, which does what? It, it holds the back of the tongue away from the back of the throat. So, and it stretches the tissues around the uh, back of the throat a little bit. All right, so let's, well, let's start with this. Is OSA uh, considered a standard of care in the dental office? Well, it is, I think. It's the American Dental Association came out and had a policy statement in 2017 that simply says we're encouraged to screen for OSA in a, or sleep-related breathing disorders in a dental office. So I think it, it's not a standard of care. Standard of care is defined by what the lawyers and the juries say is what you should do. The, it's rare for a state board to put a lot of details into the scope of practice of a dental office, but standard of care means what would a reasonable person agree is a normal function for a dental office. So is currently screening? No, that's probably not a standard of care, but it certainly is a, um, a, a part of medicine uh, that you should be doing. So a mandibular advancement device, and what's hard to see on this particular screen, but if you look closely, you'll see that there's that gray stick, but what's surrounding the gray stick? It's a clear item. That clear item is a silicone shield, and that silicone shield is the magic of a MITAP, because what it does is it makes the patient breathe through their nose. Now, the healthiest part of breathing is through the nose for lots of reasons we don't have time to get into right now, but when we give somebody a professional interim device, what we wanna do is start them down the pathway of breathing as best as possible. Not just with their jaw forward, sometimes they don't even need much forward. What they really need is to breathe through their nose. So if we can give them a solution that allows them to wake up in the morning feeling, wow, that's a good night's sleep, that we can put on an oxygen meter or some other way they can measure their, their respiratory performance, and it is equivalent of a CPAP, or at least it's way better than no treatment whatsoever, then we're moving the needle forward for them. We're helping them uh, be healthier while they're waiting for some other solution for the, for the CPAP that they can no longer use. So that's what we're going to talk about. So uh, a BITAP is fitted with hot water, boiling water, actually, and it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to fit one. Uh, if you get really good at this, you can do it in 15, 20 minutes, but there are some built-in times you have to wait on it. And all the instructions are on a video that you can see at any time you want. But the uh, time that's required for the plastic to get hot and to, to seat and to cool down is going to add up to about 20 minutes of time to fit it. So if you're new at this, probably double that at first, but none of this has to be done by the dentist. Now, I love fitting my taps. I enjoy it a lot in my office, but I don't get to do very many of them because my assistants like doing them more than I do. And they get to say quite properly, this is not a good use of doctor time. It's a great use of assistant time. So they get to make the my taps in my office and, and it's, uh, uh, but it doesn't take that long. And one of the things that you can do for your patients who are have a CPAP recall or somebody maybe who is thinking about oral appliances, but hasn't quite made that decision yet, or has a device that they're using, but something happened to it. The dog got to it. They left it behind someplace. It broke. Something happened to it. Is This gives them a preview of what a full-on custom device can feel like. Unlike some of the boil and bites you can get from Amazon or from online or from even a dental office, these are small. The MyTap uh, is a very thin device, which gives more tongue room and allows your patients to preview what a well-fitted custom device is like. I like it when patients come to see me for a custom device and they have tried a boil and bite, for example, from Amazon. This happened to me today. A patient says, you know, I got one of those and I tried it and I felt better. My wife said that I wasn't snoring as much. I said, well, okay, great, thank you, but why are you here then if that works so well? He said, well, it didn't fit very well. I used it about a week, 
and my jaw kind of hurt and it didn't really fit all that well. So I knew that I could get a benefit, but you know, that one wasn't my long-term plan. So a MyTab can give you a interim for a patient to get through a lot of things if they're awaiting a repair of their CPAP. Or maybe what's happening in your office is you're planning a series of restorations. You know they need an oral appliance, but because that quadrant and the, or those or that arch is not finished with restorations, you're kind of not ready to make a full-on custom-fitted device because later they're going to have new crowns or new fillings or whatever you're going to do there. And so then you'd have to reline it or refit it. And so why not just wait out a little bit? Great. Make them something that'll last them as long as they need it to, because we don't have a time frame that these MyTaps break down automatically. And it could last them three months, six months, a year before you are ready to make that full on custom one. Meanwhile, they're feeling good and having a good night's sleep and knowing that you're taking care of them in ways not just about their teeth and certainly not just about their airway even. You're actually helping them find good value in the services that you're providing. The other thing that, can, that comes along with a MyTap now is it's, a, it's an extra piece, but you can get some little vertical shims. They're little rubber stoppers. They're also clear, so it's hard to show you these things, but they go over the rubber stick and you can kind of, it's, it's just hard to see. I'm gonna use my cursor. Maybe you can see it right there. There's a little clear rubbery bit that's underneath the, this plastic part here. And that clear rubbery bit is a, is a vertical shim. So they come in six, nine, and 12 millimeters, and you can help raise the vertical of your patient's opening just with that little uh, squishy shim. I like it because what it does is it makes sure that there's enough room for the tongue in there without putting more things in the mouth. It's actually outside of the mouth. And so if you're struggling to get the airway to stay open and you're looking at that arch form and it's narrow and the tongue occupies a lot of space, you can make that MyTap taller just by adding that little shim over that gray plastic stick. So it's very much able to be customized for your patient. My friend Kevin Quishan teaches at, at, at Panky and, and I, I just love Kevin. And he gave, a, gave me a phrase years ago that I repeat over and over again. And Kevin calls treating airways a thinking person's game. And properly using devices like a MyTap will give you an ability to be a good thinker, a good doctor, and solve problems for your patients using these devices. Other devices have different ways of adjusting vertical. You can use uh, an apnea guard, for example, good, very good quality device, comes in three different height sizes. So I don't have pictures of that one, but you can use that to um, balance your patient's vertical change in jaw position with their AP change in jaw position and end up with a very good open airway. Just consider what might be most comfortable for them and maybe what's most useful. The larger the tongue relative to the arch form size, so you have tongues that are uh, like Dr. Thornton calls them BFTs, big fat tongues, uh, then you want to increase your vertical to give more space for the tongue not to be in the back of the throat. So using a MyTap, for example, or an apnea guard or, or a, a silent sleep, you can do this too. And you can prop the jaw open further to be able to give your patient more room for that tongue to be uh, forward, not backwards. So if you, uh, an ongoing therapy during a process means, like I was saying, you may have a bunch of restorations that you and the patient have planned, and you're just kind of not ready to, uh, to order up a custom device and then think about having to pay again for another custom device later on. Why not use a, a, a MyTap in the interim, and then you can make a full-on custom when things are settled up and uh, one arch or the other, or both, are all fully restored. So some uh, tips you can use. The video at tapintosleep.com is very thorough. There's a QR code that takes you to tapintosleep.com. That's the only place it goes. It's not going to get capture your information or anything. And, uh, and so you can watch the video that they put together. I'm going to show you some tips uh, in just, the, just a second 
about some MITAP that I'll, I'll talk through with you. Another thing to make sure that you do when you read the instructions is make sure you heat the MITAP very thoroughly. I use a boiling, I use boiling water out of a little sunbeam boiling pot. You boil the water, then you pour it into a bowl, and then you put the MITAP in it and leave the each arch in it for a full minute of just boiled water. Time yourself because it turns clear in about 25 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe. But if you need to leave it in a full minute for it to heat soak and achieve its full level of flexibility. The key to success in a MITAP is good retention on the teeth. And you'll, I'll talk you through that in a moment. If you heat the MITAP thoroughly, you have the chance of adapting it carefully to the sides of the teeth and to the occlusal surface of the teeth so it's stable and it'll hold in place. If you skimp on that one because it turned clear, it must be ready, then you, it won't be flexible enough and you will, be, you will struggle to get appropriate retention with my tap. The other thing you can do is if you've done your best and it, the teeth are just too short for the original level of thermocryl on the MITAP to fit well, you can add more thermocryl. And I've got some, something to show you about that. Um, and so you can add more thermocryl to make that work. And in the mouth shield that comes with it, you can actually hold off on that because the uh, the newness of wearing a MITAP may be overwhelming for what the patients can actually do. Great. So if you feel like they can't breathe through their nose well enough to seal their mouth off with a silicone cover, and we're not talking sealed, we're talking, you know, restricted, let's say it's a better word, then don't have them use it. Just have them use the MITAP. And if they need to breathe around their lips and around the MITAP, they can do that just fine but you can add the seal and then you can end up with a better nose breather as well. So this is my wife, Midge. We went up to the office and, uh, and I said, I wanna just record a few uh, steps with the MyTap so I can tell these guys what they can look out for. So this, my, the upper MyTap's coming in now and it's, it's plenty heat soaked, it's nice and clear. And I carefully position it over the teeth and then I have her bite into it so that she can squeeze it into the occlusal surfaces of the teeth. Then I take my fingers and I push against the buccal surfaces of the, of the warmed up MITAP to adapt it to the buccal surfaces of her teeth. Now, look at this thing coming out. I can't pause this very well, but this is not well formed to the teeth. It folded over. So I reheated it. Now I'll tell you more about that in a second. But when I, after I reheated it, I put it back in her mouth. I was a little more careful this time, had her squeeze into it. And I take my fingers and I start to press it against the buccal surfaces of the upper, especially. I make sure it's nice and stable. I can take the back of my finger and press it in the mouth. I can press it from outside the mouth uh, on the cheek side. And then I, it's better if you have her teeth on it. So you'll see that when she bites together. When she, there she goes. Then pushing it this way is the most uh, effective way of making it fit on the upper. So the upper there like that, if you end up with a messed up MITAP, so you put it in the mouth and it folds over, it, it warps itself, all those things, then put it back in that little sunbeam pot and boil it. You, this is where you do boil. You put it back in boiling water and you boil it for a minute or two minutes or three minutes and it turns itself right back into its original shape. You don't have to manipulate it. You don't have to pull it apart. You don't have to re, uh, you know, kind of make it look right. It'll do it all by itself. So that's one of the cool things about the MyTap is you can refit this as many times as you want just by reboiling it. So that first part of the video, when I put it in place, it wasn't, I didn't set it in there correctly. And I wanted to show you guys, it comes out kind of warped. And then I reboiled it, put it back in place, and then this one would fit perfectly if I took the time to show you that. You'll see a well-fitted MyTap on the video, the professional video that they did at, at, at Tap Into Sleep. So, so I'm not going to take your time tonight to show you that. So I'm going to check on these questions real quick and see if there's something I can answer specifically. 
So, um, yeah, this is a good question by Stan. Any advice on how to transfer the protrusion point on the MyTap to the starting point for a custom device other than eyeballing it? Stan, there isn't one. I haven't. I have looked and looked and talked to Dr. Thornton. I've, I've tried to find a way to do that, and there really isn't a great one. But we do uh, get to provide these things, and all of our devices are adjustable, so we get it pretty close. Here's what I do: is when they come in and they've been using a MyTap for a while, I put the MyTap back in their mouth, and they say, "Okay, kind of feel that," and then we put the the George gauge or the Pro gauges uh, in back in and say, "Okay." set your jaw where that felt right. So it's, so it's pretty close to what they just came through. So we use a little muscle memory for that one and it works pretty well. And we, of course, we always give them an adjustable device so that's perfectly fine. Can we use a MyTap over ortho? Absolutely. We use them over Invisalign trays all the time and refit it like that because it's super easy to refit. Uh, it doesn't work over braces that are wires and brackets. We have nothing that works for mandibular advancement over wires and brackets because the, uh, uh, it just gets in the way and it causes way too much trouble. So over uh, uh, clear aligners, we can do that just fine. We use the MyTap all the time over that. And, um, and uh, so that helps us get through the time of a, you know, a, a realignment while we're protecting the airway. And then when that's all done, we can use a custom device as part of a retainer system. And then hints on where, how much to increase the vertical. There, there's no science behind vertical on an oral appliance. There's, there's studies that show vertical makes a difference. There's studies that show the vertical makes no difference whatsoever. And so what we do in our practice is we try and start with as minimal vertical as we can get away with because we don't wanna stretch the parts any more than we have to. And then if it's not effective, we start raising the vertical. So if you're using a MyTap, the little shims are very helpful. And other devices we're not going to talk about tonight because I don't really have time for that. But we, we play around with the vertical when we are unsuccessful in just an AP. Now, some patients respond better to vertical than they do for AP. We're learning more about that. And still just trial and error on that one, though. There's no great way to predict that. There are some machines out there that say they predict it, but they're still working on adult on uh, awake patients. So let me show you the tip for the lower arch. Now, actually, what I want to tell you about the upper arch is make sure that you clear the tissues out of the way and you place it kind of carefully because that clear heat soaked MyTap has some uh, features to it. it. It folds over pretty quickly. It's not sticky, but it does uh, fold pretty fast. So on the lower, when you're going in with the lower, with the heat-soaked lower MyTap, watch this. See how she lifts her tongue. Very important. And then you place this down over there, have her close like that. And then you do the same thing with your fingers to hold the sides uh, and push them in like that. And your adept patients, what you can have them do is take their tongue and, and push the flanges of the MyTap against the lingual surfaces of their tongue. Can a MyTap be used for patients with dentures? Not any way I know about, uh, because they're just not, uh, they're, they're not retentive enough for that. So dent people with dentures have, you can do other appliances, but not really MyTap. Missing dentition, not a problem. And um, so you can do lots of things like this. So on the lower then, the key is that you have them raise their tongue. If you don't do that, then the, the very flexible lingual flange of the MyTap will get, will get stuck on the dorsum of the tongue and it'll get in the way quite a bit. So the, raise their tongue, you place the, the device over their arch of teeth, and then they kind of protrude their tongue over the top of it while they bite together, you know, as much as they can. And then, then, then they're, they're jaws are in the right place, their teeth are pressing the heat soaked uh, thermocryl against the occlusal surfaces. That gives stability to the MyTap. And then you'll use your fingers and they can use their tongue to press the flanges of the MyTap against the buccal surfaces of the lower uh, and the uh, lingual surfaces of the lower as well. So that's how you fit the MyTap. And you practice this a few times and it becomes very routine to do this. And the good news is, 
is you can buy a MyTap from airway from anybody. And then in your office, if you want to practice, well, what did I say to the first one? When you if you practice it and you don't like how it worked out, put it back in boiling water. It turns into a brand new looking MyTap. And then you boiled it. So it's it's clean. That means you can take your dental assistant or your dental assistant can take you and refit this MyTap over and over and over again, or at least several times until they gain some hand skills. And then when you go to your patients to use this, it's super easy. So you don't have to keep buying MyTaps and ruining them in your, in your practices, just boil it and you can practice with it again. So it's pretty great that way for training you and your team to be able to fit a MyTap. And then after they've done a few of these, it becomes so routine. It's just not a problem to fit a MyTap in your practice. So, so that's pretty, pretty easy that way. Let's see if there's anything else like this. So um, do this is also improve nasal versus mouth breathing. If you use that silicone shield that comes with it, then it absolutely does because it forms you, it makes the patient an obligate nasal breather. It kind of seals the mouth up a little bit. Um, if you struggle to get the MyTap to be good and retentive, the way I've just talked about, then you can also buy a thermocryl in these white beads. It's the same thermocryl almost, it's in the MyTap. So you can heat these up in hot water and, and, and put some of them in the MyTap and, and then you can, it's kind of like relining it, only there's no acrylic involved. And so you can make that super easy for your patients to get extra retention if you need to. So you can buy a little bag of these thermocryl beads from anybody and it'll last you for a very long time. Now it says what criteria maxillary versus mandibular? My taps are both because that's how you use them to hold the jaw forward like this. And so, yeah, so you wear them both at the same time. All right, so there's the my tap. I hope you got some good out of that one. How are we doing on time? So let's look at another thing you can do to help your patients. So your patient comes in and there's, there's some reason why you want to protect them from a pair of functions. They're, too, they're clenching, they're grinding. And, and you don't have a lot of time to do something to help them. You know, they, they come in and they've, they've cracked the tooth. I, I just went through this not too long ago when I saw my dentist, Dr. Jamie Brooks, who's on faculty at Panky. I said, Jamie, you're going to find something wrong on the right side because something hurts over there. Well, I went through quite a few uh, times with, with that tooth being sore. And sure enough, she found a cracked uh, cusp down there. But what if your patient comes in and you need to do something to protect their teeth right away? And you don't have time to make a night guard. You don't have time to do something in your office. You need something that you can do right away, something very quickly. What if they have a lot of provisional crowns and their night guard doesn't really, you don't really want to refit the night guard over provisional crowns, but you do need something over their teeth. What can you do? Well, the AM aligner material is sold in a wafer form like this. So the AM aligner, I'm gonna talk about AM aligners a little bit more in a bit, but the AM aligner material is sold in a wafer, like a arch form. And it's a thermocryl, a white thermocryl like you saw in the MyTap or in the beads, but it's got Kevlar in it. So it's really tough and it's this tan color. Well, what I do in my practice is I just warm that up and it takes a while to heat soak that one too. So we leave it in a hot water, not boiling water this time, but hot water, say 150 degrees. And you leave it in that water for about two minutes. And then when you place it over the teeth, you can form it over the teeth, not as precisely as the white thermocryl, but plenty retentive by folding it up and making it fit over the teeth. And you can make little trays out of this. You can make protective guards out of this. And so you can give somebody something right away that can protect their teeth from extra forces so they can clench all they want on this Kevlar reinforced thermocryl. They're not going to break it or break their teeth. So it's very handy this way. So I made a little video with Midge. I've warmed up the thermocryl. I place it over the arches like this, have her bite into it, squeeze pretty hard, and I can fold it up over her teeth like this and give it a little bit of retention. Just like we did the MyTap material, 
I fold it up like that. You see how it kind of starts to hold like that when it, as it cools down. You don't have to worry about it holding on the lingual surface here. I always make these on the upper, by the way, when I can, because it's just it doesn't interfere with the tongue space. So in the time we've got here, I'm, I'm just rocking my fingers back and forth, just smooshing that, that thermocryl in there like that. You can see it doesn't occupy a lot of space in her mouth. She's squeezing her teeth into it to make it stable. And then now I've got it uh, out, I take it out like this. It's kind of, I tease it out this way because it's still not all the way cool. And you can see what I have. Now I've cooled it down. And I, with just some cold water, it snaps back into place and see it, it's retentive like that. And she can bite into it all she wants, do as much clenching as she wants to do, and it's not gonna hurt a thing. And I may, I just make these in MIP. This is not the same as a, as a flat plane bite splint. It's not intended to, find, to, for, to help her find a place to keep, put her condyles in a centered position. It's just a protective device. But it only costs you a few bucks to buy that uh, that arch form. You can see how long it takes. It takes less than two or three minutes to make, and out the door she goes with something to protect her teeth. So it's a handy little uh, emergency type of a bite splint. What about your patients that are in your office for a long restorative appointment? And they're, they so you know that you've you've worked on them to get them into a good condylar alignment. You know where all the parts are because you you've done that work. You've helped them get to an MIP and a CR that match up, but yet you're going to hold them open for several hours. Maybe you're doing a quadrant full of restorations. You've got the rubber dam on. You're doing a you know a root canal. You're doing something that takes them a long time and affects the parts around the condyle. We know those parts. We we know they can move down and forward like that. We do this on purpose for our mandibular advancement devices. And overnight, they take a set forward that we have to rehabilitate with an AM aligner that you'll see in a moment. But what about a long restorative appointment? What, if, what happens at the end of a long restorative appointment? You're going to be taking maybe a bite record for, a, for, inter, for indirect restorations. How do you know that the condyles are reseeded in the same alignment, in the same position, in the same soft tissue shape that they were that you worked so hard to get an MIP and a CR for? How do you know that that's true? Well, let's take something from airway to airway management. So you have this prep here, you know, nice look, I just pulled this off the internet. These are not my preps, but you need to take an accurate recording of this. If the condyle has been forward for several hours while you've prepped this, are those retrodiscal tissues the same shape? Is everything aligned the way that they're supposed to, like Dr. Higdon writes for us when, he, when he, in his beautiful pictures he, he gives me permission to use? Is that true? Well, let's see. Let's think about this. How can we help know that's true? In airway technology, when we give people a mandibular advancement device, we tell them that in the morning, their bite isn't going to feel the same because they've been forward all night long. And we give them some simple physical therapy exercises using a custom made AM aligner to reset the parts so that their teeth will come back together normally. So we use Thermacurl Plus in these little beads, just like the white ones I showed you, only they're tan. It's the same as the arch form I showed you before. By the way, you can use the arch form. And we use Shimstock from Almore one of my favorite little tools. So what we do with this is we heat up the thermocryl beads in Dixie cups with hot water and a paper cup. We form it into a little ball like this and we form it over top of the lower incisors. But wait, before we do that, we use shim stock <clears throat> to check and see, okay, what holds bilaterally before we've affected the bite with a forward posturing device or a long restorative appointment. So we use Shimstock. We just gather up a target. So somewhere on both sides, the Shimstock is going to hold. 
it doesn't really matter which teeth. We're not checking for specific teeth. We just want to make sure there's a hold on both sides. And so then we fold the thermocrel that's been softened in warm water over top of the lower incisors, have them bite down into MIP again. And we form that over those teeth so we can see that index for when the teeth are in full MIP. We basically fill the overjet and overbite with thermocrel. Then we go back with our shim stock and we make sure that they can actually hold that when the teeth are fully in, uh, together on the on the uh, uh, on the thermocrel. So now we have a accurate and hard index for the full MIP that we're looking for when it's time to take our bite registration later on. So we can do that on the front teeth, we can do it on the back teeth, we can do it anywhere we need to, depending on where we're prepping to make sure we have that, uh, that, that ability to return the condyles to full strength, to full position. So let's look and see how this works. So I just put a little piece of shim stock in a Miller forcep and watch what happens here. I put it in place and I can pull it straight away out from underneath Midge's first molars. But then I ask her to bite and hold, and I can't pull it out. So the instructions to your patients are, make sure you bite together. Because she was just closing her teeth. She wasn't really biting. So now I have this shim stock on both sides. I'm, I warm up the thermocrill. I place it over the lower incisors like this. I have her bite into MIP. I shape it up against the upper teeth so I can still see the edges. And I have her bite, and look at that. It holds the shim stock in the same places that I identified before I put the thermocrill in. So now I know that that thermocrill is an accurate representation of MIP. So imagine if your patient's finished with their preps, rubber dams off, the cord's in place, whatever it is that's working in your patient workflow system. And your dental assistant pulls out the thermocrill AM aligner that they made in the beginning stages of the appointment, puts it in place and makes sure that the shim stock holds in the same places that they recorded, you know, an hour or two hours before. Now you can have a great deal of confidence that your interocclusal record or your scan, depending on how you do that, will accurately reflect the proper condylar position. And all you've spent to make this happen is moments of time, uh, a shim stock uh, foil that can't cost more than, who knows, fractions of a penny, and about four cents, five cents worth of thermocrill. So that's all it takes. And, uh, weigh that against you know a, a being uncertain about your bite registration. So there you go. I don't think thermocrill is good enough for a bite registration. It's not accurate enough to mount models with. And if you're doing scans, of course, you don't need it that way. But uh, it's excellent for uh, bringing the teeth together in the same alignment. So those are my tips to share from the world of airway management. Let's check this chat out now again and see if what we got here. All right, so how to TM guard patients, how to pair the therapy. Well, if they need a temporal mandibular guard, that's a different thing. You're trying to, it's a whole nother lecture, another, another discussion as well, is you're trying to solve a specific temporal mandibular problem. And so you use specific devices. Could be a AM aligner type of device. It could be a flat plane splint. It could be a quick splint like somebody else asked about. Lots of different ways to help with that. And it could be a MITAP with a mandibular advancement. Those sometimes, we, we do those for patients uh, who need some clearance for their front teeth and an open airway. Just did that last week for a patient, as a matter of fact. How long do you wait between pulling the MITAP out of the boiling water and placing it in the person's mouth? Well, I don't worry about that too much. Uh, of course, you don't just you know, pull it out and, and jam it right in the teeth. You, I, I give it oh, 15, 20 seconds. The video that you'll watch, I think says 20 seconds, but, uh, but it doesn't cool down that fast. And so, and it doesn't, so it stays plenty warm. You don't have to endanger your patient's teeth 
on that one. That's really not a big factor there, but it is a few seconds uh, from one point to another point. Any problems with individuals that have obstructive poor nasal breathing when their mouth breathing is decreased or eliminated? Well, we don't eliminate mouth breathing if they have poor nasal breathing. So one of the things about the mouth, the shield on the MyTap is that it's a nasal breathing trainer. Well, you also have to help them clear their nose. And so uh, another talk I gave was about nasal clearance, but the short answer is you use saline sprays, uh, nasal neti pot type nasal rinses, medications if you have to, to make sure they can breathe through their nose. You certainly cannot uh, close off their mouth and their lips with a, a silicone shield if they can't nasal breathe. Now, uh, part of nasal breathing better is to do more nasal breathing. And so if they need to do a better job of breathing through their nose by keeping their lips together, there are multiple ways of doing that, but one thing you can do is use this silicone shield as the trainer. And so they put it in, they, they concentrate in, on breathing through their nose better. And then if they get too much air hunger, they just take the shield out because it just pulls out. It's not a big deal. It's not attached or anything. And so it's a, it's a trainer mechanism that you can use. Do you boil the water for a minute, then stop boiling and let the MyTap sit one minute and then insert it, or do you keep it boiling? All right, so the initial fit of the MyTap is you boil the water and then you pour the boiling water into a, like a bowl or something with the MyTap in it. So you don't really boil the MyTap. It just sits in the, the MyTap sits in the just boiled water for a minute, okay? Now, if you mess up the MyTap and you fold it over, it sticks or something else, then you put it in boiling water and you boil it for two or three minutes and then it returns to its normal shape. So there's the two differences. And then when you take it out of that reshaped, reboiled MyTap, then that's when you cool it down a little bit because it's pretty hot. But uh, if you put it in just boiled water and you pour the boil just boiled water over the MyTap, it's not as hot as that. No, I use quick splints and I'll, I use, I'll use a lot of quick splints. I love quick splints too. That's a different thing, a different topic for that. So quick splint is very good for front teeth, but if you want to support all the teeth for a clincher, for example, the MyTap arch form is better than a quick splint because they can clench on the back teeth just fine and nothing hurts anything. How do you bill for this therapy in my practice? That's all, it's all cash for these kind of things because none of this is covered by dental or medical insurance. Now, um, just because it's just not. So one of the reasons why we can use something like a MyTap that costs $85, a, a arch form of quick splint of, uh, I'm sorry, a Thermacryl that costs, I think it's about $7, or a bag of Thermacryl beads that costs another $7. You can, they just don't cost very much. They don't take much time. And you can have your dental assistant doing nearly everything I've showed, in fact, everything I've showed you tonight. So it doesn't take a lot of doctor time either. So you don't have to have a big fee for this. And so you can make it affordable, a good value for your patient. And you give them an answer for their problems without costing a lot of money. <clears throat> what was the name of the Kevlar material? It's just Thermacryl Brown is what it's called. I don't know if, I don't know if it has a different, oh, Thermacryl Plus, there it is. Thermacryl Plus is the brown material and thermocryl is the, uh, is the white material, okay? Thermocryl plus is the brown, that's how you buy it. Could you just use jet acrylic instead of thermocryl? Well, of course, but you know, thermocryl has no smell. It heats up in hot water and it, and it, and it's, and it cools down and takes a set almost you know, within a minute or two and it doesn't, and you can um, remold it just by reheating it. So yeah, if you if you want to use jet acrylic, go ahead. That's no problem. I've done lots of jet acrylic things. We we made um, lots of bite splints of panky out of uh, out of acrylic. But the modern materials are a lot easier to work with and certainly more patient friendly because this doesn't have any smell to it, and patients don't mind it in their mouth because it doesn't doesn't taste icky. So it's it's much better. But go ahead, use uh, and Madam Butterfly is fine. But Madam Butterfly has, is uh, 20 microns, is it, or something like this? I use Shimstock because it's eight microns. So we can get a little bit easier look to it. And it doesn't, it's not, again, doesn't mark up the teeth at all. Um, 
different, this may be for a different course from Lorraine. Uh, does this uh, tongue loose tone and REM sleep? It does, and it is a different course. All right, can you uh, explain how you determine a fee for the MyTap appliances or appropriate insurance code? There is a code, it's called EO485. That's a uh, medical equipment code. Nobody pays for that. The uh, oral, the MyTap costs you about 85 to $100, depending on how much you spend for it. And so your, and your doctor time is a few minutes. Your assistant time is about 20, maybe 30 minutes. So just know your cost of doing business and add it up for your own particular practice. That's the best way to do that for the MyTap. Where do you buy these things? You can buy all of these from uh, Airway Technologies, from Great Lakes Dental Technologies. You can buy them from uh, probably all this, the labs that make uh, oral appliances can sell you a MyTap. So lots of ways to do that, yeah. All right, has there been any research or statistics on where the CPAP recall patients seeking OAT increasing? No, not that I know about. I, I follow message boards and the physicians because they have no answers. They don't want to get the questions about CPAPs too much. And so they are collectively shrugging their shoulders is how I'm phrasing it, because they just don't have an answer. They're not sending tons of patients to dentists. I do have colleagues around the country who have said, oh yeah, I'm getting a lot more referrals this way, but not too many. Uh, and certainly that's not really a, a big thing, not, not like it should be. Even on the AASM, the American Academy of Sleep Medicine message boards, I'm a member of AASM, so I go on these boards and I don't see enough, in my view, responses to that. So it's just, just how it is, you know, it's, it's, it's a shame. So I think that's why you should reach out in your patient populations and ask your patients, do you have a CPAP that's been recalled? I can help. And if, you, if you're adept at doing oral appliances, then you can go right into a custom device or you can help them tonight with a MyTap or, you, or one of the other professional interim devices, but basically be a resource for them because they may be on their own out there. The DME companies that normally supply CPAP equipment, they don't have any backup and the physicians don't have any other way of thinking about it. So you can be a whole different kind of doctor for them and give them a very good health concerning message saying, I'm here to help. I can, I can do something to alleviate your troubles straight away. And that's a good place to, to be.